Peppers are one of our most popular garden crops. And not only that, also one of our most productive and most bountiful. The unripe, tasteless peppers at the grocery store pale in comparison to the beauties that we can grow right at home. And even better than that, peppers are easy to grow. They transplant well and are fairly resistant to pests and disease. And that's what makes them ideal candidates to grow in pots or containers. Let me show you how I grow mine in pots right from seed, and it starts right now. To grow the best container peppers this summer, we must first ensure that we have top-notch starter plants. We begin with a quality organic seeding or potting mixture. For peppers, I tend to use the 72 cell trays, even for the smaller varieties, like habaneros and cayennes. Fill that tray to the top and compress each cell by about one third. Fill those depressions back in and level off the tray nicely. Before seeding, let's soak that with about two liters of warm water for around two hours. For seeding peppers, we have two methods available to us. The first method is to simply place a single seed in a small depression in the middle of each cell. Easy enough, albeit a bit tedious. Try to get the seeds as close to the center as possible and just roll them in your fingers to separate them if they're starting to stick together. Make sure the seeds are about one to two centimeters down and then just pinch those holes closed and we're done. The second method is just as easy and is known as the multi-seeding strategy. Here, we take anywhere from eight to 12 seeds and place them randomly in each cell. The theory behind this is that peppers are great germinators and even better transplanters. So why worry about the seeds having an entire cell all to themselves? And if you need 500 pepper starter plants for the season, making up one tray is far easier than making up seven or eight of them. One note with the multi-seed method, it's much easier to put a new one inch skim coating of soil over those seeds than it is to try and push each one down individually. Either method you choose, the end result is peppers that sprout in about a week or two. Peppers begin to emerge quite vigorously. They grow up to the light with a purpose and rarely flop over like their tomato cousins. I let them grow another two weeks after initial germination and then I prep them for the transition to larger pots. I use the standard four inch nursery pots, both for the economies of space, but also because it's the perfect size to take these plants to the precipice, either for sale, planting in your garden, or planting in the containers like we are today. I fill my four inch pots with that same organic potting mix. At this stage, we do use quite a bit more, so I'll throw a link in the description below on how you can make your own ultimate DIY potting mix right at home. Fill your pots much the same way, right to the top, then compressing them down and refilling and leveling again. If you have multiple trays to do, just get them all done now and earn your efficiency badge. Again, soak these pots from below with about two liters of warm water and let them sit for around two hours. Soaking these pots helps the soil to maintain its shape as well as minimizing transplant shock for the delicate roots. For whatever reason, warm water seems to soak up faster into those pots. With the handle end of a screwdriver, make a nice big hole in the center of one of those pots. Then, with the flat end of that same screwdriver, gently pry out that first plug, avoiding the temptation to pull on that stem. Place the young seedling as deep as possible and simply pinch that soil around the stem to complete the planting. Now 
Now, let's try a plug with more than one seedling in it. Pry it out much the same way and pull the two or more seedlings apart, revealing their own root systems. As there will inherently be less soil on these plugs, make your holes a little bit smaller for this potting process. Plant them as deep as they'll go and then close that soil around the stem, completing the planting. Peppers plant quite quickly and are infinitely less finicky than tomato seedlings. Less roots initially, tougher stems, and smooth leaves that don't stick together in the most frustrating fashion. So don't be surprised if you blast through these trays at a lightning pace. Place a cover over those newly potted plants and let them grow in ideal conditions for three to five weeks. With our young plants growing like crazy, we're now ready for our larger pots or containers. Peppers truly do grow to the size of the container, so a minimum of five gallons is recommended even for the smaller varieties. If you are using a bucket or container, ensure you've drilled eight to 12 holes in the bottom for drainage. Peppers will quickly rot from the bottom up if that water doesn't drain out. Whichever container or pot you use, fill it about 75% full of a quality container mix. I do pack mine down a bit, but that's probably more force of habit. Then, grabbing your young pepper plant, gently coax it out of that pot without tugging on that stem. Just place the pepper right in the center of that container or pot. Next, fill in and around it with that same container mix all the way up to that first set of true leaves. This first example here could have easily been planted about four inches deeper. I was much more happy with this little guy. Much better depth and much better placement. You can see why you really want that mix to be light and airy. You want to allow those pepper roots to find their way around the pot, both vertically and horizontally. And trust me, these pepper plants as they grow will utilize every inch of that container that you give them. Good stuff, and pretty easy to rattle off a few of these containers to ensure a summertime pepper bonanza. Time for the final step of mulching and watering. Our first instinct is to always water right away. But first thing we actually need to do is mulch. For my peppers this year, I'm using a 50-50 mix of coarse straw and green grass clippings. You can use shredded leaves, yard debris, or really almost any organic matter or foliage. Lay it on thick at least three inches and pack it down as you go along. Don't skimp on the mulch. It really does help us to grow the best peppers and is one of the most vital steps. Mulching helps to moderate temperature extremes for your soil, as well as to prevent moisture loss during those hot summer days ahead. But of immediate benefit right now, is that it allows us to water from above. We can now water those peppers safely without blasting that soil everywhere. Even with my coarse watering can, the mulch barely even moves. As you start to run out of space to plant in your spring garden, our thoughts often turn to what you can grow in pots. Much like tomatoes, peppers have the unique distinction of almost being designed perfectly to grow in a pot. So don't hesitate to grow some of your favorite pepper varieties in pots or containers this year. It's really easy and I know they will do well for you. 
If you want to learn more about growing your own peppers right at home, check out the links in the description below. Hey, thanks for watching guys. If you're getting value in this and the other series that I'm doing on YouTube, hit those like, share and subscribe buttons if you'd be so kind and I'll see you in the next video.